If you haven't already decided where to go for the Sleep Style Dex Discovery Week, I'm hoping this video will help you decide. But on top of that, this also happens to be somewhat of a tutorial for how to use Banana Tank's Sleep Style Dex Plus Plus, or what I like to call the Sleep Style Tracker. It's basically a spreadsheet that you can make a copy of for yourself in order to keep a record of what you have and what you might want to hunt. And there are actually quite a few more features besides just tracking your sleep style, which I'm not going to cover completely today. Today, we are mainly focused on looking at how to use the sleep style dex tracker part of this spreadsheet. I'll leave a link to this pinned in the comments section below. So how do we actually use this spreadsheet? Just like any of the spreadsheets that you normally will encounter with this game that are community made, what you will have to do is when you open the spreadsheet, you go to file and make a copy so that you can actually edit the spreadsheet in your account. And basically to start, you just have to click on every single sleep style that you've encountered in this game. Now, do you have a few tips on how to do this quickly? Number one is if you've actually completed most of the sleep styles, it will take you forever to just check all the boxes. So all you have to do is select all of the boxes. If you're on PC, you go control A and then press spacebar. That will allow you to check all of the boxes at once and then just remove the ones that you are missing like this. How you do it in other systems like Mac or iOS or on your phone, I'm not actually sure. I usually use the spreadsheets on my PC. So if you guys have tips on how to do this on other systems, let me know in the comments section below. And the next tip I have for you guys to speed up this process is when you go to your sleep style decks, and this was pointed out to me by Banana Tanks is instead of looking through these Pokemon and then clicking into their sleep styles to know which sleep styles you've unlocked or haven't unlocked, a quick way is actually to click the button in the top right corner of this page. And what it will essentially do is expand all of those sleep styles so that you don't have to click into every single one. Now, if you sort them by Pokedex number, it will be quicker to complete this form because everything will be in order. So as you can see, I've got all of my Bulbasaur lines completed and Charizard line is completed, Blastoise line is completed. So I just go all the way down until I find my first missing sleep style and that would be Butterfree. So what I essentially have to do is just scroll down to Butterfree and uncheck Butterfree's four star sleep style. And one more tip is if there are multiple missing sleep styles, so let's say for example, I am missing two Mr. Mime sleep styles, I scroll down to Mr. Mime and instead of clicking each individual one, I can just drag and then press space bar. And that again allows me to bulk select several sleep styles in order to check or uncheck like this. Now, several of you have pointed out that this spreadsheet seems to be missing one or two ditto sleep styles. Don't worry, it's not missing. Those sleep styles are just not available in the game just yet. So if you look at my sleep styles for ditto, I am missing the Bulbasaur version of Ditto, but then I'm missing one more. Now that one more is Larvitar Ditto, which is not available in the game as yet. It seems to be an incense only Ditto, but you can't even encounter it. So don't worry about Ditto, all of the sleep styles are there. Now, as I said at the start of the video, this is not about my account. We are looking at Piggy's account. So I've already completed the spreadsheet for Piggy's account which is over here. And she's missing some Charmander, Charmeleon, Charizard sleep styles, Butterfree, Blastoise. So she's missing quite a few sleep styles more than I am missing sleep styles. In fact, Piggy doesn't even have a single Dragonite sleep style. And I'm just gonna quickly go through the list to show you guys what kind of things she's missing. There's no Gallade at all, no Crocolore or Skeledurge at all. Now, once you've finished inputting your data into the first sheet, you go over to the missing Dex tab and you'll be able to see the metadata on your collection, basically telling you how many sleep styles you are missing. So it seems like for Piggy, she's currently missing 135 sleep styles out of a total of 567. This is for all areas. For her, she is missing 
equal amounts of 3 star and 4 star sleep styles. A lot of the missing sleep styles are in snoozing, which is probably no surprise because I do think that most people find it hard to get snoozing compared to the other two sleep types. Now if your numbers look a bit weird, I do recommend that you double check that you've currently inputted 276 million drowsy power in this box here. And that's because the current highest drowsy power requirement Pokemon is Suicune at 275 million drowsy power with 3 star sleep style. So if you don't input a number that's bigger than that, this spreadsheet will lock out some of the sleep styles from its calculations. So for example, if I simply put in 1 million drowsy power, well, Piggy's not missing any sleep style that's under 1 million drowsy power. But just to be safe, you can put in 1000, as long as it's above 276 million. You can also see the breakdown of the number of sleep styles that she's missing per area. Now, if you remember from my last video talking about this, is we want to go to an area that has the least amount of sleep style completion. And you can look at it on the game itself if you simply go to map and look at the percentage that's listed above the map and go to the area that has the lowest percentage. For example, for me, that would be either Cyan Beach or Greengrass Isle, both at 92%. But between Cyan Beach and Greengrass Isle, generally speaking, Greengrass Isle will have all of these four stars that I haven't unlocked and Cyan Beach will have less four stars that I haven't unlocked. And that's because Greengrass are missing a lot of three star sleep styles. And on top of that, four star sleep styles, you can only encounter one per session. Now, last video, there were a number of comments that corrected me saying, yes, Ditto can spawn besides another four star sleep style because numerous Ditto sleep styles are four star, but they're not a top belly. So what I should have said instead of saying four star sleep style is that only one a top belly can spawn per session, but all a top belly are definitely four star sleep styles. But if you hear me say it interchangeably, saying four star, you can only have one off, I'm kind of excluding the Ditto exception. Now back to the percentages listed here. There is a problem with just looking at this number. Now for casual players, it's okay, just pick the lowest number and go with it for the sleep style discovery week. But for those who are a bit more sweaty gamers like myself, we want to know a little bit more about what this number means. Because like I said, well Cyan Beach will have more three star sleep style that actually can spawn multiple of in the same sleep session. Whereas four star, generally speaking, except ditto, you can only get one per session. So between Cyan Beach and Greengrass, I would prefer to go to Cyan Beach if I'm just trying to unlock more sleep styles. Well, this is where the spreadsheet will be quite handy. So let's take a look at Piggy's account. She is missing the most number of sleep styles at Taupe Hollow and most of them are in snoozing type. Now for the sleep style discovery week, it is possible to encounter Pokemon outside of their usual sleep style. So that's the good news, is that we don't necessarily have to force snoozing. But generally speaking, it's still better for us to match the correct sleep type so that we get more of those spawns that we need from that sleep type. So we will still want to force snoozing where possible. So the first nuance here is that, well, just because an area has the most sleep type missing doesn't necessarily mean that's the area you want to go to if you can't even hit the right sleep type. If you're very bad at getting snoozing or you've over snoozed in the week before and now you're only doing slumbering and dozing, then you might actually get less than you expect for missing sleep styles from the snoozing sleep type. I don't think that's a big factor. I think it's still good to just choose an area that you have the most missing sleep styles. But it's just for me to say that it's not that clear cut to say that Taupe Hollow is the place to be for Piggy. If Piggy were not going to Taupe Hollow, would the second best place to go to be Greengrass Isle? And the answer is actually no. And I will explain why in just a moment. Let's scroll down and see what the rest of this spreadsheet tells us. In the next segment, what we actually see is the highest drowsy power sleep styles that Piggy is actually missing. Now Piggy is actually missing all of the three stars for the three legendary Pokemon. 
And of course, them with the most drowsy power requirement shows up as the top three for drowsy power cost in this list. And we can see the top 10 that she's missing where it costs the most drowsy power, as well as the bottom 10 Pokemon that cost the least drowsy power that she's missing. I guess this could be useful if you're trying to hit a very big drowsy power to see which area will have most of the Pokemon that uses that amount of drowsy power. Let's say I can hit 300 million drowsy power by halfway through the week. Well, which area would I benefit most from? It would definitely seem like a good idea to go to Green Grass Isle because, well, all three legendaries have a boosted chance to spawn if you haven't encountered their three star style, like Piggy. The problem Piggy currently has with that is that she doesn't have any master biscuits to spend on them. So making them spawn now may not actually benefit her that much. Sure, she'll get some dream shards, but perhaps it would be better if she saves this encounter for another time when she actually has a master biscuit with her. But of course, some of you might just want to complete your decks. So in which case, green grass would seem sensible if you haven't got any of the three stars for the three legendary Pokemon. If you were only missing one of them, then you would simply pick the area which that Pokemon spawns in. That's a decision you guys will have to make for yourself after assessing your situation. But at this point, I must stress the importance that you need to be able to achieve that drowsy power for it to spawn. That is just assumed knowledge. Because there's no point of us talking about whether you're missing three star Raikou or not. If you can't achieve 244 million drowsy power, it's not going to spawn. In fact, you will need more than 244 million drowsy power because the theory about drowsy power requirement is that all of your eight Pokemon spawns cannot add up to more than your actual drowsy power. So if you got 300 million drowsy power that session and you're lucky enough to spawn a four star Meowth Karata that costs 163 million drowsy power, you're not going to see a Raikou because 163 million plus 244 million is above 300 million. So you do want to be well over the drowsy power requirement listed here to be comfortable in encountering these legendary Pokemon. That is not the case when you run in incense during those legendary events because incense doesn't eat up the drowsy power that you do the session with. You still have to meet the minimum requirements, but it doesn't use the drowsy power like your eight wild spawns do. Regardless, I think this section is more for interests only rather than having any major effect on which island you should go to for this event. The part that I really want to show you guys is this one here. You can actually select which area you want to look at specifically. So for example, if I want to look at how many missing styles at Greengrass Isle that I have, I would select Greengrass Isle and I can see that Piggy is currently missing in total eight two-star sleep styles, six three-star sleep styles, and 31 four-star sleep styles. And now you can see the problem I was talking about. The problem being that actually Greengrass doesn't have a lot of three star sleep styles anyway. So you can't be missing that many to start with. And if the only thing you're missing are four star sleep styles, ditto aside, knowing that you can only get one four star sleep style per session, is it actually worth going to Greengrass Isle for this event? And I think to me, the clear answer is no for Piggy's account and for myself. But you should analyze your own account, have a look and see what your spreadsheet looks like to see if it makes sense for you to go to Greengrass Isle. I know that a lot of players say that they can achieve better Snorlax strength at Greengrass Isle, but the randomness of the berries might actually mean otherwise. Whereas I find that preparing for another area like Cyan Beach or Taupe Hollow, I always know what berries those islands are and I can prepare the week before. Next, let's take a look at Cyan Beach and compare this. So remember the numbers at green grass, we've got six three stars and 31 four stars. Have a look at Cyan Beach. So for Piggy at Cyan Beach, she's missing nine three stars and only 14 four stars. So it's already looking a little bit better for her to go to Cyan Beach. 
But I think the area that she really could utilize this event the most is at Taupe Hollow, which we already mentioned from the earlier table. She's missing 25 three star sleep styles and only 24 four star sleep styles. So instead of comparing the percentages of missing sleep styles like listed above the map, the better way to look at this, in my opinion, is to look at the number of missing three star sleep styles instead and ignoring everything else. I'm not saying the others don't matter. I'm just thinking that one and two stars are just going to spawn anyway because their drowsy power is usually quite low. I don't think anybody really has any trouble encountering one or two stars, generally speaking. Four stars, it's a matter of luck, considering that only one can spawn per session. Again, Ditto is the exception, but only one per session. So I think the real focus is, well, how many three star sleep styles can we get per session? And the more missing ones we've got, relative to the total count of sleep styles in that area, the better. Now, the only way to know the percentage is to do the calculations yourself. So I've already done the calculations for Piggy, but basically I divide this number by this number. And so I've done the numbers for Piggy to look at how many missing three star sleep styles she's got relative to the total number of sleep styles in the area. She is only missing one to 2% of three star sleep styles in green grass, which is a very low amount if you ask me. So most of the week, she'd actually be only encountering two star sleep styles, the occasional four star, one per session, and then not much of those three star sleep styles. And once she completes the six remaining three star sleep styles, there would be nothing left. In contrast, at Taupe Hollow, she is missing 25 three-star sleep styles, which is 11% of the sleep styles in that area. She's got a five to 10 times more chance of encountering these missing sleep styles being three stars. Now, of course, this is still a simplified way of looking at it because not every three star has the same drowsy power requirement. The chance to spawn varies depending on their drowsy power requirement as well. But to go beyond this, I think is unnecessary. I feel like it's pretty clear for Piggy to be heading to Taupe Hollow if the goal is to complete more of the sleep style decks. Now, of course, at the same time, we could ask whether there's anything worth catching for Piggy at Taupe Hollow. And I think there's a good argument now to look for an Onyx because of the potential for a steel type island for the next area at Old Gold Power Plant. But of course, what every person needs to hunt is going to be slightly different. And that's not the topic for this video. However, I will lead you guys on to another part of this spreadsheet while we're here to show you what else this spreadsheet can do. If you go to encounters table, you can actually select the Pokemon that you're interested in looking at. For example, if I were interested in Onyx and I check the Onyx checkbox here, it will tell you where Onyx spawns and which sleep type it's under. You can also select Onyx in this drop down to see its drowsy power requirements. But of course, all of these numbers are also available at the Rainix calculator. So while this spreadsheet shows you what you're missing, you probably remember me talking about Nerth spreadsheet, which shows you what you have. And you can also select Pokemon to see which area they belong to, to see where you need to go in order to hunt. And I think the combination of these two spreadsheets, along with the Radenex calculator, is going to be the three most powerful tools you can be using to educate yourself. Thank you for watching guys. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe.